Well, we're right at one o'clock here. Should we get going? Sounds good. Great. Right. Excellent. So welcome or welcome back if you're joining us for another great garden conversation. Thank you for being here. We're happy to be here today to discuss small space gardens. And every gardener has a small space. So for this next hour or so, we're inviting you to remove the distractions and just be inspired with some big ideas for those small scale areas. My name is Kathleen Hennessy and I work with Monrovia's PR agency, Axiom Marketing. Before we meet the Monrovia team, I have a few things we need to just cover with you today. We are recording this talk, but don't worry, we can't see or hear you. Your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. But that doesn't mean we don't want you to participate. We are encouraging everyone to ask questions throughout the presentation today. And you can do that by typing your questions into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. We have a few Monrovia team members who will be monitoring and answering questions throughout the discussion. And we will have some time at the end to answer a few of those questions live. My guess is that we might not get to everyone's questions live, but please ask anyway. We'll follow up with the answers either via email or in an after party conversation that you'll be able to find on YouTube. We will also have a second way for you to participate today. At the beginning of the discussion, we'll be asking for your opinion. That will be coming up in our poll questions, so stay tuned for that. If you miss anything during the talk today, we will be posting this webinar on Monrovia's YouTube channel, and you'll find lots of great videos and discussions on other topics on that channel as well. We'll be sending you a link to this conversation in your email very soon. So with our housekeeping completed, let's get to know our Monrovia experts. I'd like you to meet Katie Tammany. Katie's official title is Chief Marketing Officer, but she really fills the role of Chief Storyteller and Trend Spotter at Monrovia. She has more than 20 years of expertise in lifestyle and leisure industries, and in 2001, she became the youngest Editor-in-Chief of Sunset Magazine in the company's history. Katie is a longtime avid gardener with a specific interest in the intersections of garden, art, health, and well-being. And her favorite small space garden is her front porch outside her office. She has a trio of containers there that she changes out seasonally. And I bet it's just bright and very springy looking right now. Right, Katie? Yes, thanks, Kathleen. Yes, right now, <clears throat> because here in Northern California, we're having exceptionally good weather. <laughs> Spring has definitely sprung. And uh, I've got lots of bright, bright colors to welcome people. Excellent. I'd also like you to meet Georgia Clay. Georgia is the new plants manager at Monrovia. So she is our go-to expert for plants and just a plant enthusiast in general. Her role, in her role, she works with breeders and plant finders from around the world to bring new plants to market for Monrovia. And part of her job includes trialing and testing plant varieties that we as consumers may not see on the market for many years. Georgia's favorite small space garden is her backdoor patio. She's bringing the inside out right now, designing the area with houseplants, which is a really fun idea and something we'll be talking more about today. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Katie. Kathleen and Katie. <laughs> Too many Katie's. <laughs> so again, thank you for joining us today. Katie, I'm gonna hand it right off to you. All right, thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. Um, so, we're going to start off, as Kathleen mentioned, with a quick poll. Um, what do you think the most important tip is in designing a small space? Is it, let me just switch that, there we go. Is it using container plantings, um, thinking in layers, or maybe it's just choosing smaller plants? What do you think? We'll now open the poll and see. Sounds um, good. We've got some people voting already. So let's see. Right now, running away with it is thinking in layers. Hmm. Yeah. So that's at 62%. And second is choosing plants that stay compact at about 27. Using containers, interestingly, is only at 11. Hmm. So thank you for participating, everyone. Well, we've got some savvy designers out there, it's clear. Um, actually, all of these ideas are good to keep in mind in designing a small space. And we're gonna, 
We're going to get into those um, in the next hour. Uh, so what we're going to talk about. One is what do we mean by small? Um, as Kathleen mentioned, everybody has a small space somewhere in their garden. Um, talking about compact plants and how to make sure that uh, what you're choosing is going to stay in bounds and and, uh, and in proportion to your space. Uh, we will talk about containers, how to use them effectively. Um, the trend of, of moving indoors and out and how that can help expand your space. A um, little bit about thinking in layers and how to do that. And finally, using walls and height to enhance your small space. So that's what we, we plan to cover. I'm going to take on some of the design and trend um, ideas there. And then George is going to help me out with some great plant ideas to fulfill those, um, those designs. So to start with, what do we mean by small? Um, well, really, it's any space in your garden that is kind of contained by either walls or hardscape. Um, you know, it could be a narrow space between the front of your house and a pathway or even the street. It could be a, a patio or dining terrace in the backyard. Definitely front porches qualify. Um, walkways, driveways, you know, especially those that have those long, narrow borders. And then also corners, edges, as you turn a corner in your garden, maybe it's a little nook next to the wall. We all have small spaces to think about. And I think one of the, uh, the main things with a small space is because your eye is focused in those areas, um, because you're, you know, you're bounded by boundaries, that it means that you want to be really thoughtful about the, the plants that you choose in those spaces, because whatever you choose is going to get more attention. Um, so to start with, um, what do we mean by choosing compact plants? We don't mean choosing everything in little four inch plants, but a lot of our uh, plant choices for shrubs and trees, um, you know, usually when we make those choices, we can choose an evergreen that can get quite high, you know, 20 feet um, or 25 feet, like the tiny tower on the right here. Um, but really when we're dealing with a small space, like some of the ones that I just showed, you probably want to choose some, some evergreen shrubs that are going to stay smaller. And I think one of the wonderful things that uh, breeders have focused on in the last 10 years, especially, is breeding plants that are going to stay more compact to suit today's typical landscapes. And so a few of those plants, Georgia, might include the, the, uh, the one that I just showed on the screen there. You want to tell us a little bit more about jade waves? Yeah, you know, um, so jade waves, camisipris, you mentioned it, Katie, awesome, more compact variety. Um, camisipris is an excellent foundation plant altogether, but this jade waves is just a much more manageable size in those smaller spaces that have way less square footage to work with. So instead of 15, 20 feet tall, like you mentioned, Jade Waves is going to top out right around eight feet tall. Um, and then next to it, you know, Tiny Tower Arborvitae. So this is another great option for smaller spaces. You know, maybe you do need more height, but you have a limited width to work with. Those small spaces can look sort of different depending on what you have to work with. Um, but Tiny Tower would give you that height that you need, so 20 feet tall, but it only is going to spread to about four feet. So perfect for creating a privacy fence in areas that maybe are a little bit more narrow. And then lastly, Mugo Pines, a great evergreen plant for texture and color. Little Rick is only going to be about four to five feet tall and wide, so nice and shrubby, easy to tuck into those small spaces and create those layers and that texture. Uh, many mugo pines tend to brown out in the winter, which isn't always great for an evergreen. So um, this little Rick was selected specifically for its ability to hold that green color all year round. And I'd say, you know, when you're shopping for plants, I mean, check the plant tag, the mature size should be on there. Um, and as I mentioned, there are so many um, now, you know, new varieties out there that are taking what we love about some of our larger evergreens, but putting them into a, a smaller size, so perfect for smaller spaces. So let's talk about containers. I know, you know, it, it, it ranked maybe last on your list of important tips, but I think it's something that, um, 
is really part of the small space garden because it's so versatile. You can change your, your small space instantly by moving containers around, replanting them. And a few um, tips that we like to uh, keep in mind as we're thinking about using containers in a, a small space. One is choosing easy care specimen plants and maybe planting one beautiful statement plant in a container. Um, and also using bright color strategically, uh, you know, in the in the image here that I have of uh, Grace and Grit <clears throat> pink rose, that's placed uh, to you know illuminate um, the space. That's that's really kind of wonderfully calm with with greenery, but then it's got that that uh, that spotlight on the bright color of the shrub rose. And I think that's something to keep in mind as you think about using color in a small space is really thinking about um, you know, color balance, either choosing one color to really focus on or tones of a similar shade. I think that's really effective for small spaces. Um, the other key thing we like to keep in mind is you can certainly pair the same plant you know, on either side of a gate or a doorway. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want that matchy matchy look, um, simple arithmetic, either combining three smaller plants, maybe on one side of a door with one taller plant, or maybe it's two smaller plants against one um, larger plant on either side of a, a door. That creates a sense of balance, but also um, creates a nice um, sense of diversity and helps you bring in more plants if you like the look of, if you have you know, more than one favorite that you want to bring in. Um, I think the other uh, key thing to keep in mind is you can, in your containers, have height. You can choose patio trees, you can choose topiaries, you don't have to keep everything low. And in fact, that's something that a lot of people, you know, sort of, um, you know, miss an opportunity to bring in a, a taller plant in a container. You might also think about bringing in an edible in a container, you know, that that really helps enhance the function of even a very small space. And I think one of the things that's really nice is to do that around a dining area patio, whether that's herbs right alongside the dining terrace, or maybe you want a berry plant right there. It's really nice to have uh, edible plants growing around where you plan to dine and entertain. Um, and then the last tip is really thinking about your mix of pots. If you're using more than one container, look to have either all the containers in the same tone or completely mix them up. You don't want to have, you know, a sea of terracotta and then you have one, you know, metal container. Um, either go completely, you know, a potpourri of, of tones or choose kind of a set um, style, you know, to keep your space really calm. So once you've got the, the containers uh, chosen, what should we put in the, the containers? <laughs> what plants should we choose, Georgia? Yeah, well, you sort of alluded to this uh, endless amount of options that you can really choose so many things for containers, but I've chosen a few. The first one being this little ragu, which is a sweet bay. You can see it's grown in a container in that photo. A beautiful plant with deep green, evergreen foliage and a really beautiful bright red stem. Um, this is the culinary bay, so the leaves are super fragrant. They can be dried um, or used fresh and used to flavor all sorts of dishes that you'd normally use bay. So great for that kitchen container garden or next to your dining area. Uh, Little Ragu is already a more compact selection, so it's going to be six to eight feet tall if left to its own devices, but it really takes to pruning super well, um, so it can really be kept even smaller in a container. This is one that we do grow on a patio tree, so like you mentioned, you could do all sorts of things, whether growing in bush form like what you see or up a stake. Um, also a great candidate for overwintering indoors. So you see it zones eight through 11, but you can easily move that indoors for the winter, which is why another reason why we love container gardening. Um, another great edible is the new fig nominal ficus or fig. Um, this is a super unique brand new variety of fig that we just love. It's a miniature dwarf fig tree. It grows, as you can see, almost bush-like 
It's gonna be only about three feet tall and wide. So perfect for those small space container gardens. Um, it does produce a nice medium sized fruit. So the fruit isn't miniature, um, and it does have that nice fig flavor as well. And then you had mentioned berries. So I wanted to give an option for berries. Uh, Superlicious is a wonderful container candidate due to that compact size and the thornless stem. So you don't have to worry about getting pricks. Um, Superlicious produces large berries with this really wonderful flavor. Um, we're continuing to trial this further and further south with great results. So, um, you know, zones four through nine, and that's all the way down to Southern California, we've been able to get some great fruit production too. So that's really promising. A lot of, of different zones and climates can really utilize this blackberry. And then uh, some more unexpected container plants like roses can be kind of fun. Um, roses have a bad rap for being rather finicky and hard, but varieties like Grace and Grit um, really do make them quite easy. This one is pictured here is pink. This rose has beautiful, highly saturated flowers that are going to self clean and repeat bloom throughout the season. We also tested these roses for years throughout the country um, in places like South Georgia, where that disease pressure is extremely high. And it always has healthy, glossy foliage. So we know it's highly resistant to diseases like black spot in the garden. Um, this is a shrub rose, so about five feet tall in total and about that wide. But again, we grow it in a patio tree, so you could easily grow it up and have a taller statement container plant. Hydrangeas also can work well as well. Um, choosing compact varieties is really the key to success. So something like Seaside Serenade Cape Cod would be awesome because it's only going to be four feet tall and wide. It also has these really sturdy stems and a nice neat rounded habit altogether. Um, it's a repeat blooming variety, so you get masses of flowers that are great for cutting. You can see here it's blue, that's an acidic soil but it'll be pink if you like it more, um, if you wanna keep your soil neutral or alkaline. But in containers, it's a lot easier to acidify your soils to get that color change the way you like it. And then lastly, perennials can really work well too. Um, Katie, you mentioned this um, using bright color to sort of illuminate your space. Mm -hmm. And I think Javelin Forte Deep Purple really does that quite well. This particular variety, looks super good for such a long time with minimal effort, which I think makes a really great container plant. It's just a flowering machine. It flowers from spring through the fall. Um, and of course the fragrance is phenomenal and a great pollinator attractant as well. And I think that uh, that's something, you know, in each of these plants, you've touched on um, how they sort of have more than one function. And I think in a small space, when you're choosing a container plant, especially when you're putting one plant in one pot, you really want to think about, you know, what that plant is going to give you and, and um, making sure that it's, you know, maybe more than beauty, maybe it's scent or attracting pollinators. Um, so let's then talk about moving indoors out, which is the other way to really help your small space feel large. So one is, is thinking about having a similar palette outdoors that you do inside. You know, the, the image here on the left uses even the same kind of patio um, tile outside as, as indoors. And not everybody can do that certainly, but just thinking about your color scheme that you have um, indoors as you walk outside, keeping that kind of balanced, you know, maybe your style is cottage and bright inside, then go for it outside as well. Um, but that's one way to really um, extend the size of your small space if it's right outside your door. Another uh, trick, if you will, is to bring your house plants outside. Um, actually, you know, now is a great time to do that and through the summer. And that can help make your small space feel um, like it's part of an extension of your, your indoors. I think the other great trend that we're seeing a lot of is um, the use of tropicals and bringing ferns um, indoors and out and, and playing up that lush feeling that the tropical um, plants can give you outdoors. So weaving those throughout your, your small space um, outdoors can give you that feeling of being on vacation, even if that small space isn't very large. So let's talk about um, some plants that can help you create that feeling. 
Yeah, well, you know, Kathleen mentioned that this was my favorite way of uh, garden, gardening in small spaces. So I'll talk about traditional houseplants first. Um, one of the reasons why I love doing this is because keeping houseplants outside during the growing season is a great way to keep your plants super healthy and thriving throughout the year. Because indoors, a lot of us don't have the, the absolute perfect environment for a lot of these tropical houseplants. Um, they'll live, but they really do thrive if left outside for the summer. Um, we are offering a fantastic lineup of larger houseplants to create this really beautiful, lush, full container for an immediate impact on these sort of spaces. I'm highlighting a few here, some of the more unusual trees that we have, like Ficus umbellata, which have these really massive, highly textured foliage, and then the Altissima, which is really bright lime green um, variegation in there. We have vines like the mini Monstera, the philodendrons. Birkin is here, but we'll also have Silver Sword and Pink Princess, so some really interesting varieties. Um, and then I've thrown in our tectonic caldera begonia as well. Um, one of our newest additions to the tectonic series, extra large, bright green foliage, bigger than my head, probably <laughs> yours too. Um, and it stands nice and upright and tall. Yeah, and, and something I love about those plants with larger leaves in a small space is it, it actually can give you this illusion of the space being bigger than it is. Don't be afraid to use um, those larger leafed plants in a, in a small space. Yeah, and then um, the next slide here is highlighting more of the borderline plants, um, so more traditional outdoor plants that can easily move indoors as well. So Little Ollie um, is an awesome heat-loving evergreen shrub. This particular selection is more compact and more dense than the typical olive trees, um, but it can, again, be easily trimmed to a smaller size. Another easy one to transition from outdoors to in and vice versa. And then Angio tree star ivy is um, a really cool plant. It's a hybrid between Fatsia and English ivy. Um, so you get that really super bright foliage and shades of greens and creams that look very ivy-like in shape. Um, but because it's not ivy, it's not going to root or spread aggressively in the garden. So you don't need to be afraid of this. Um, it looks beautiful, trained up a wall outdoors, um, but you can also put it indoors full time if you'd like. Um, I personally, I use this outside and then I cut the foliage for indoor arrangements. I think it looks great with flowers, but it also looks really beautiful on its own too. And then Colocasia, uh, this is Royal Hawaiian Waikiki, another great outdoor indoor plant, um, brand new variety that we are super excited to be first to market on this year. Uh, really large foliage, uh, but it has that beautiful bright yellow center and a nice deep pink stem. Uh, the Royal Hawaiians as a whole have great garden performance and this variety is really no exception. So a nice clumping habit stays about three feet tall and wide at max. And then, uh, you know, you mentioned succulents and succulents like this painted Echeveria uh, do really well, very low maintenance. And I love this painted Echeveria because it has that really unique coloration with that painted red margin and midrib. And then moving on to ferns, lastly, wonderful addition for those soothing green tones that we're talking about. Um, also great for adding a lot of texture. So foxtail fern is one of our absolute favorites. It has that really long, upright, fluffy plume. Looks great both in the ground and in containers. Another one that's perfect for big impact in that smaller entertaining space. Another one you can put indoors if you'd like. And then Jurassic Velociraptor, which is a unusual fern brought to us by Dan Hinckley, the plant explorer. It's part of our larger Jurassic fern collection. Super fine texture, but a really robust plant as a whole. Um, this is a hardier selection. So typically they're not hardy down to zone seven, but this one is, which we love. Um, but it's also a terrace type fern, which is um, great for indoors as well. So this is a really nice transition piece too.
Yeah, you could even have that in a basket. You know, you can have that lovely ribbon fern up high, um, outdoors as well as in. Um, I love the uh, the Waikiki colocasia too because it's got that light and dark trend right on the leaf that we've been talking about. Um, and it's a great way to um, attract the eye in a small space. Actually, I love that and the painted Echeveria for those reasons. You know, I think going back to what I said at the very beginning, when you have a small space, it becomes that much more important to choose you know, those attention getting plants really carefully and then, then let them, you know, go ahead and capture attention by being um, displayed prominently. So uh, let's talk about layers. And that was definitely uh, right on, you know, at the beginning of, of the hour when so many of, of you said, yeah, that's the most important thing. I think when we're talking about um, creating a space that even if it's small feels ample and lush and surrounds you with what you love about your garden it's really about uh, planting in layers um, planting in layers uh, and thinking about okay i've got my medium shrubs in the back and i'm going to do a, um, a a perennial in front and then a good ground cover that helps soften the edges of your space and helps you add you know um, just wonderful dimension um, to wherever you are i think one of the key things is to keep your overall color palette pretty simple um, adding you know, pops of color, as I said, sort of sticking to either, you know, one bright color, maybe it's red and you have red sort of popping up throughout your small space, or maybe it's something softer like the pastels of, you know, lavender or salvia. Um, but you can also add that pop of bright color in your furniture choices. Um, that's one of the reasons I chose this image down here where you've got just these really bright yellow patio chairs in a very small space um, that are that are wonderful contrast to the, the pale pink and white um, that's blooming around it. Um, so I think a key thing to keep in mind is thinking about how you want that small space, whatever it is, to function. And if you do want a seating area, um, you know, keep keep uh, that 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 in mind that that's really your focal point and then you want to have beautiful backdrops around it. Um, so when we think about um, lush layers, uh, Georgia, I know that you've you've selected a few kind of tall, medium, low plants to keep in mind. Yeah, so um, we've tried to give a little inspiration this <laughs> with our plant choices. Um, so we're reading from top to bottom. So our first combination is nitty gritty white on the top left with salvia dark matter on the bottom left. Um, first, we have nitty gritty white acting as your compact shrub. I'll call it the medium. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we call a ground cover type rose. It's not a ground cover that, you know, something that's really low to the ground, but it's just more wide than tall. So three feet tall by four to five feet wide or so. Another rose that is super disease resistant, self cleaning and blooms like crazy until the fall. So super low maintenance. Um, and those white blooms are gorgeous, especially when paired with the super saturated, those deep blue flowers of salvia dark matter. This is a brand new salvia that we've been trialing for years. We are so excited about it. It's an amazing plant. It has some of the largest flowers we have seen in salvia. It almost has a, a fuzzy look in the garden because the flowers are so wide and tall. They're just amazing. They're also earlier to bloom than uh, most other cultivars on the market. Um, and then we'll rebloom again throughout the season. So you do get this really beautiful flower show from both of these. That white and the blue is pretty classic combination for that low maintenance sort of sunny border or small bed. And then next to that is Seaside Serenade Cape May Hydrangea paired with Spicy Lime Hookerella. This combination is actually planted in a small bed at our Dayton, Oregon nursery. And I am so in love with the combination. Um, I look forward to it every year. It's such a good pairing for those part shade dappled sun areas that can sometimes be a little bit of a design challenge. Um, Cape May is a gorgeous lace cap flowering variety um, that again is gonna repeat bloom and it's held on these really strong stems so they're not gonna flop over. I really love the foliage on this variety as well. They're slightly serrated, 
And they have these really nice glimmers of burgundy that get more dramatic later into the year. This is also a serrata type hydrangea. So it's hydrangea macrophylla subset serrata. Um, and what that means is that it's just naturally more stem hardy than the traditional macrophylla. So um, great for those of you in the colder areas that tend to get a lot of stem dieback on your hydrangeas. Um, this should be slightly more stem hardy than just your standard macrophyllas. Um, and then under, of course, the lime foliage and the reddish plum splotching of spicy lime hucarilla really pops in the shady area, especially with Cape May's bright pink flower. Um, this is a hucarilla, which is a cross between hucra and tiarella. It's a fantastic hybrid because it combines disease hardiness of tiarella with the colorful foliage of hucra. Um, it also, the hucarellas in general, are a bit more shade and moisture tolerant, um, which is great for underplanting with your hydrangeas in particular. And then uh, moving on now to our next, which is uh, starting with summer lasting raspberry lagerstromia. This is our classic dark meets light combination we've been talking about, Katie. Mm -hmm. um, Great myrtles are not traditionally thought of as great plants for small spaces. They're these rather large, uh, robust trees, but our summer lasting series is really changing that. This is only going to be about three feet tall by three feet wide, making it super easy to use it as more of a compact flowering shrub in these small spaces. Um, it does have that dark foliage year round, also one of the earliest flowering varieties available. Um, summer lasting raspberry is going to rebloom heavily and it does have those really bright, intense pink flowers and it'll rebloom without deadheading. So it's really super low maintenance this plant is. I really think the series as a whole is some of the very best crepe myrtle breeding uh, that we see that, there's, that there is out there on the market. Um, and then we've paired that with silver foliage of angel wing senecio. High impact, lots of contrast between that dark foliage, the silver foliage, and then that bright pop of color with the pink. Um, angel wings has that really velvety texture as well. So great pair for the crepe myrtle because they both love heat and sun. And then lastly, we have more of a subtle combination, um, something I think even smaller. So if you're thinking you're taking your small space onto an even smaller level, um, this is an awesome one. Brilliance Autumn Fern with red leafed Matinia, perfect for the shade. Um, you know, we have been talking, Katie, about mixing tones of one shade um, and sort of ombres. Mm -hmm. And here you have that golden, orange, and red sort of repeating themselves in different forms. I also love that this is hardy all the way down to zone four. Yeah, I think that this pairing um, is just, it's so beautiful in like a woodland garden, in a, you know, where, like, as you said, where it's being shaded maybe by some tall trees. Um, this would be just stunning. I also think the, the crepe myrtle with the Senecio I can just see that in that that place I was talking about, where you might be, maybe between a house and a pathway. Um, it's a the crepe. This crepe myrtle makes it just a fantastic foundation shrub, uh, or along a driveway. That would look really spectacular, um, especially when it's you know blooming with those great flowers. But wait, there's more. <laughs> um, Want to talk about uh, how to draw the eye up um, uh, and really. Uh, think about plants that you want to um, have either cover a wall or um, appear, you know, higher than the rest of uh, your space, um, that you can really extend your landscaping by thinking of um, how you um, move plants up the wall. And I think that um, you can also be pretty artful uh, using espalier, using topiary, using um, um, you know, repetitive shapes or forms along a back wall um, can actually make a, um, a, a wall appear longer. Um, so that's, that's, you know, a tip or a design trick to keep in mind, especially, again, if you're thinking about patio spaces, dining terraces, but this actually would look quite lovely, you know, along like a, a neighbor's fence. Again, it's a way to get 
um, a lot in a in a tight space, um, especially when you use the the espalier. So um, and, and vines certainly vines can help you achieve this look as well as well as small trees, but we want to um, suggest that you think about other things besides, you know, typical small trees. And uh, I think we even have some some good edible choices in here, too. Yeah, um, you will start with the vines, because I think that vines do such a good job, as you talked about, Katie, of, of drawing your eye upward and really filling in the spaces that are so often not utilized. Um, and when you have a small space garden, utilizing your space to the max is uh, really key. So first up is Burgundy Queen. Um, you know, most bougainvilleas are really about the flowers and the foliage is sort of goes to the wayside, but Burgundy Queen is also about the flowers. They're totally gorgeous, beautiful, deep burgundy, really dramatic color, but it also does have beautiful foliage as well. Um, it does have all the new growth has this deep burgundy red new foliage and when it matures it's sort of hard to to put into words but it matures in this really deep dramatic hue of green that's just different than other uh, bougainvilleas yeah just it's like it has this it has an undertone almost of the burgundy that stays with it it's just so spectacular yeah, it's a really dramatic, super floriferous, just beautiful vine. Um, and then next to that is Mandavia. This is Sunvia Pink. Um, this is a really impressive plant that is able to just pump out a ton of blooms throughout the season. We trialed hundreds, if not thousands, of Mandavia all. <laughs> And um, this plant really did impress us just with the blooming power, but also its ability to hold its flower color without fading, even in the heat of summer. Um, that's a big deal for us. A lot of uh, flowers, Amandavia, will fade out or sort of bleach out even. Um, this is a climbing type, so looks great letting growing up in the garden, but also um, perfect for use as an annual if you're in a colder region as well. Um, and then next to that, another vine that's sort of unusual is Lacy Hearts False Hydrangea Vine. Um, this is great, again, for adding that height because it self clings to the wall. So you don't even have to trellis it. It'll self cling. It's awesome for softening those structures and creating that small space living wall feel. Um, this is, again, brought to us by Dan Hinckley from Japan. Uh, its claim to fame is really the foliage. It has this beautiful splashing of white with different shades of green. It almost shimmers in the light. It's this really beautiful uh, foliage, but it does also produce a nice large lace cap bloom. So similar to a hydrangea bloom in the summer. Great job at staying a manageable size. So only 10 to 15 feet tall, um, but really nice for those for those walls that you need something that's really gonna cling itself and look beautiful year round. And then uh, some fun edible options as well. Uh, you can grow against a wall. So zestful grapes could easily be trained to sort of a stylish trellis, or as you mentioned, a spoliade um, would be a really nice welcome addition too. It's hard to find larger table grapes for the home gardener, um, mm -hmm. but zestful grapes are just that. They are a really large table grape style of vine with wonderful flavor. I really love waterfall because it does have a rather unique shape to it, sort of fingery, long, um, but great flavor. And then you can also utilize, you mentioned a spoliade, uh, fruit trees. So Fuji apple here is just one example of a tree that Monrovia sells as an espalier. Uh, espalier, that just being a method of training a tree against a flat wall. Um, it's a beautiful way of getting this feeling of abundance into a small space and utilizing that space that we so often do not use. And then in the beginning, we spoke a little bit about compact plants for privacy, conifers, evergreens, upstanding emerald arborvitae is an option, option just for that. Um, it's gonna grow about 15 feet tall, but stay uh, narrow at about five to eight feet wide. Um, so great for blending your fence lines, adding a little bit of privacy. 
And then Emerald Colonnade Ilex is another option to fit that same bill. So a great evergreen, tops out about 12 feet tall, again, five to eight feet wide, so nice and narrow. Um, perfect for mass planting, but it also shears really well. So it makes a great container specimen. We grow this in its natural form, which is upright, but we also grow it in lots of topiary, so spirals, things like that for adding a little bit of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the um, kind of dense structure of both of these, um, the last choices that you just mentioned, because they do make great privacy um, screens too. Okay, so um, if you're not redoing your whole space, but you really want to get just a quick refresh in your small space, choose a plant this year that may turn heads, may get, you know, um, uh, you know, may inspire you and may get others talking and asking you, where'd you get that plant? Uh, we have three that we're super excited about that we want to share. Yeah, so uh, these are all brand new plants that are out in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing them and trialing them for years, and we are just really excited to be able to offer them. They all should be available this spring, if not now, and within the next couple of uh, months. So the first is this Fresco Apricot Echinacea. Um, super excited about this Echinacea. The flowers are super unique. They're almost Xenia-like. They're quite large in this sort of ombre shades, the depths of color. It's almost fluorescent, uh, really beautiful, nice sturdy habit. And it does just pump out the blooms all season long. So really nice for an instant refresh for a long impact. And then next is this really unique to Lotus Joey improved. Um, again, we are seeing demand for those ombre shades, those interesting textural elements. And this really checks all of those boxes. It has this beautiful succulent foliage. And then it's paired with just loads of extra large, super fluffy flowers, uh, just a really unique and cool combination. Uh, it's an Australian native plant, so it thrives in hot, dry, full sun environments. So great summer plant, um, more compact, has really nice branching. Um, so the zones are 10 through 11, but this is an awesome addition for an annual. Um, I think it would be a beautiful in a container as well as in the garden. Um, the flowers also will attract butterflies. Mm -hmm. and can be used for cut flower arrangements too. So a really interesting plant, uh, surely to catch the attention of anybody who, <laughs> who walks past it. Um, and then lastly is this Xenia. It's the Profusion Red Bicolor Xenia. The Profusions as a whole, as a series, are really wonderful because it's a hybrid between Xenia linearis and the garden Xenia that most people know and seed out in the garden. And what that does is it gives you this really gorgeous plant that's super disease resistant because of its linearis heritage. Um, so you don't have to worry about mildew and all the other things that can sort of take a hit with your zinnias. Um, awesome disease resistance, awesome heat tolerance. Um, the bicolor flowers are stunning, super abundant. It's more of a of a mounding type habit, so less upright. You get a mounded habit that just pumps out the blooms from late spring until first frost, uh, but still like a regular zinnia, great for pollinators as well. Thanks, Georgia. And so that's our um, list of exciting plants uh, that work well in small spaces and some ideas that we hope have been uh, useful to you. And if there are questions that we can answer, in uh, the remaining minutes that we're together. Uh, Kathleen will direct us. Oh, I think you're muted, Kathleen. Oh, yes, see, I was <laughs> busy typing answers, so didn't want to hear the keys on there. We do have a bunch of questions, and one of them is, um, we had a lot of questions for great container plants for both full sun and um, shade. So I just thought maybe you guys could share your favorite for container plant for both sun and shade? Well, I love um, Sun Believable. Actually, our sunflower is a great container um, plant for the sun. 
Um, it looks good with so many other plants too. Um, so I love to pair it with grasses. That's, that's a winner for me. Um, or just, you know, on its own because it really has so many blooms. That's, that's a fun one. Um, and I think shade, I love that mucadinia. I'm crazy about it. The one that um, Georgia was talking about that's paired with the autumn brilliance fern. I just feel like it looks like the edges were painted on. Um, it's, it's definitely an attention getter in my own garden. And people always ask me, what is that plant? So I feel very proud <laughs> that I have something distinctive. Excellent. Georgia, you have some favorites? Yeah, I would agree with all those. Gorgeous, stunning. Um, you know, one of my favorites that I keep planting year after year in a container for my hot container in a rock garden is the Biddens Golden Empire. Mm -hmm. um, Biddens was one of those plants that I really did not like <laughs> years ago. <laughs> But um, this variety uh, that we grow, you can find it in a Monrovia container if you'd like to try it, um, is so awesome. And it just blazes through the summer, no problem. Last year, I had it in bloom from now in April all the way up until I think the end of October. It was just amazing. And it looks beautiful. I travel a lot. And so it doesn't need a lot of water. I just really love that plant. Um, and then I love any fern for the shade, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Kind of on that same um, vein is one of the, the viewers was asking if we had some suggestions for um, plants that they could fit into kind of nooks and crannies in a full sun rock garden. Mm. Thoughts there? Um, nooks and crannies. Well, I, you know, I don't know if you would agree with this, Georgia, but um, Creeping Jenny um, kind of is one that tucks in well, <laughs> you know, to lots of places. You can put it into a container, but it can also just, um, I don't know, it looks, it looks good against any other kind of plant. And it really, um, provides that like pop of lime green color. I, I love that plant. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And I also, um, you know, there's a lot of really wonderful sedums, mm -hmm. sedums spiriums, which would be the ground cover, cover type. Um, I love those in a rock garden. I think they do a really good job of filling in spaces really quickly too, and they don't need a lot. Uh -huh. um, so that's really nice to tuck in. That's what I usually do. Um, but I agree. I think Creeping Jenny would be a really nice addition as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question on creating a border for a patio. Mm -hmm. um, wondering about some um, grass uh, options. They're looking to kind of line the, bat, the, the patio border with, with some sort of low growing grasses. Any thoughts on those? Yeah, we didn't cover too many grasses today, did we? I'm just trying to think what I have myself and like I tend to have like big ones <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of low growers George do you have yeah my favorite um that's come out it's relatively new it's come out in the last couple of years it's um ginger love penicita mm -hmm. it's uh gonna be so I don't know what your version of compact is but I have this around my fire pit patio area and it's like two and a half feet tall or so uh -huh. Um, three feet went into plume and it's just gorgeous. It clumps really nicely. Like I said, it has these really beautiful uh, plumes. It's called Ginger Love because they have a little bit more red tones in them and they do stay nice and tight, nice and compact. So you're not blocking the view uh -huh. uh, to the other parts of the yard. Nice. So another question, um, what was the zone of the perfusion red um, zinnia? Oh, so, yeah, we didn't, we didn't put that on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, eye. So the zone, uh, I put annual on there um, because it really is sort of for one season. I wouldn't recommend over, I mean, you can try, but <laughs> we really think of it as an annual. Yeah, exactly. Um, so many questions still coming in. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot with any of these. <laughs> so here's a question that you might might be able to help with. 
Um, we talked about some smaller trees today, and we did have one person ask if the tree is smaller and we're, we're saying it'll do well in a container, does that mean the root system is smaller? They're looking for some small trees to put near the house and they want something that isn't, um, you know, doesn't have a, a very large root system. Right. Well, I've had a Japanese maple in a container uh, for 15 years. <laughs> I've had this Japanese maple is doing really, really well. Um, it's quite happy. So that's always what I recommend um, in terms of if you're looking for a tree that does well, looks good all the time in a container. Excellent. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I also think, you know, going to the garden center, the thing that you want to avoid is a tree with a log with a tap root. Tap roots tend to not like to be in a container or close to the house, but um, your garden center should be able to help you. But I agree, Japanese maples, awesome container choice, especially the compact varieties. Yeah. The other um, uh, plant that I um, you can sort of think of it as a tree, depending on, you know, how it grows is camellias. Camellias do really well in containers. Um, I just love those. Excellent. Well. I mean, I always think that's an option too. Instead of planting, you know, in the ground right near your house, do the container. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. especially Katie, if you've had yours forever. So yes, yeah. Excellent. Lots of questions coming in about um, can we get this list of plants? Can we see the the presentation again? And everyone, you will be able to see it on Monrovia's YouTube channel. We'll be sending you a link in your email very soon. So I think that's all we have time for today. If we didn't get to your questions, we will try to answer them as, as we're wrapping up here. Um, but we will also either do a kind of after garden party answering some questions as a follow up and you'll receive a link to that conversation. And I did want to give everybody a heads up on next month's topic. We'll be talking about stunning plants for cutting gardens. So thank you again. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Thank Happy you. spring. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.